Blog Talk Radio. Greetings and salutations, hempsters. Welcome back to the hemp train of thought, that is. If you're listening to Hemp Aware Radio for the first time, I'm so glad you're listening in, and welcome back if, uh, if you're listening again. Tyler Hemp here, your hemp-enthusiastic, hemp-entrepreneurial host, here to hemp power and hemp educate your hemposphere because it's important for food, shelter, clothing, energy, and so much more. So get out your pens and notebooks, boys and girls. You might want to jot down some vital insights on this episode today. And I'm broadcasting from the Upper Sacramento River in the Trinity Mountains in Northern California. And I'll be joined in just a moment with Morris Beagle, hemp entrepreneur, advocate of hemp farming and processing and production, innovation, hemp education, legalization. And he's also the creator of an awesome company called Tree Free Hemp Paper and uh, also the NOCO Hemp Expo out of Loveland, Colorado. And he's going to assist me with hemp educating your hemposphere today. Uh, you might be listening to a recorded version of this, but either way, thank you for your awareness, your time, and uh, your attention on this topic. Hemp Aware Radio is dedicated to putting emphasis on what's most important to you, your needs. So what is your dream? What is your purpose? What is your mission? Why are you here And what are you going to do today to integrate at least one thing with hemp? That's why I'm here to encourage you and inspire you to do whatever it is that you can. And uh, I sincerely want you to succeed in your business and in your life, especially with the help of hemp. Uh, And the purpose of Hemp Aware Radio is to assist you to overcome the challenges of our time and accomplish your biggest goals and visions and dreams, especially as it relates to hemp. And uh, one of the most uh, important groups uh, are are entrepreneurs. You know, we're the leaders of innovation and and the future of of the world as far as, you know, making change. And that's why I have an amazing entrepreneur uh, and and hemp entrepreneur, Morris Beagle. Thank you so much for being on today's show. I really appreciate your presence. I appreciate you inviting me on, Tyler. Good to be here. Right on. Yeah, so... For our listeners that aren't aware of you and and the NOCO Hemp Expo, which is the most popular uh, expo on hemp in in the U.S. today, you guys have been going for four years now. Um, But before we get into some of that, I'd love to hear how you initially got introduced to the hemp industry and to hemp in general. Well, being uh, I've been a cannabis advocate, or I should say a, a user, you know, really since high school and not really aware of the industrial hemp side of things until 1995 when I moved back to Colorado. Um, I was in the music business for the previous seven years. I was in Atlanta, and then I was in California from 91 to 95, and then I moved back to Fort Collins in 95 and started a music and video production company called Happy Scratch Entertainment. And when I moved back, I connected with a local store called the Hemperer's New Clothes, and befriended the owner, and that's really where it all began. I learned about hemp soap and rope, clothing, hemp seeds and food, and read the Jack Hare book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, during that time. So that's really where it all started for me. Right on. That's cool. So since 95, so you've been in it for a while. And, um, well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, that's yeah. where I really got introduced to it. I was in a, you know, I had a music sure. production company and we were doing CD and DVD manufacturing and packaging, t shirts, hats, mm-hmm. stickers, events, music licensing, and really a full blown production mm-hmm. company. And I didn't really incorporate the hemp side of things into the industry, other than I, you know, I became aware of it and certainly supported what was going on just from an outside perspective, but I didn't really jump into anything until 2012. Okay, cool. So it was in your consciousness. You knew about it. You were a consumer of cannabis. You knew the different uses of hemp from reading Jack Herrer's book. And, uh, and then eventually something happened to where you, you shifted and you're like, all right, I'm getting into this industry. Um, what was, what was that shift for you? How did that happen? So being in the physical media business, which was a big part of my music production side of things, doing CD and DVD manufacturing, as well as distribution, 
the digital movement really came in and and killed that. Um, hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, somebody calling through. I had to send them away so it wouldn't beep in my ear. No worries. So my apologies to those out there listening that uh, I've got, you know, somebody calling in on my phone. So anyway, the uh, the digital side of the business with Napster and MP3.com and peer-to-peer file sharing put a huge uh, hit on CD and DVD production, media manufacturing, distribution, and and it really was the demise yeah. of the music industry. And so come, mm-hmm. you know, late 2008, 2009, 2010, I was trying to figure out where I'm going to shift my emphasis from being in the entertainment industry for 25 years. And over the course of the next couple of years with the cannabis movement in Colorado from the medical side and then the push on recreational and with that push on recreational trying to legalize recreational and regulate it like alcohol with Amendment 64, that legislation had a clause in there that would allow Colorado farmers to start growing industrial hemp. And I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. that sounds like something I'd like to get involved with because I'm a supporter of it. And, you know, I could start jumping in and doing hemp clothing and T-shirts and hats and merchandise for bands and utilize my entertainment background and my resources and my connections to to continue on doing entertainment stuff while incorporating hemp into it. And that's really how it all began. So, nice. you know, so what I did was I launched Colorado Hemp Company in 2012 and was one of the mm-hmm. first adopters in creating a new hemp organization here really in parallel with Amendment 64. And, you know, what was happening really in 2012 and 2013 before the farm bill happened, you know, it was really activist and advocate driven. And at that time, you know, I saw the potential that it was going to be rapidly expanding and we really needed to get the industry together and the consumer side of it starting to go. And that's really what spawned the whole NOCO Hemp Expo idea. Absolutely. And so your entertainment expertise certainly overflows into the NOCO Hemp Expo. Um, You know, I haven't attended myself yet but I will next year and I've heard many great things you know just as far as the quality of people and vendors and educational uh, aspects that you're doing so it's, it's an amazing event if, if you all haven't uh, checked it out check out NOCO Hemp Expo and uh, be there next year especially if you want to see all the innovative products that are coming on board and, and get educated on how you could potentially integrate hemp into your business or into your lifestyle um, and on that note so when it comes to you know these amazing promising aspects of hemp in your mind, um, what are some of the, the biggest potentials or, or you know um, things that will help improve the quality of life for the millions of people uh, in the U.S. and abroad? Well, I would say health and wellness, food and nutrition, that aspect of hemp from the seed and the oil, protein powders to the cannabinoid supplements, those that are really becoming popular. I mean, all of that shows tremendous health benefits for humans. Um, I also think that the promise for the agricultural sector, sector, you know, the family farm, being able to shift towards a crop that's really better for the environment, better for the soil, um, that uses less water, uses less pesticides, herbicides, uh, sequesters large amounts of carbon, you know, if we can be growing this crop in vast acreages across the planet, um, I think that, you know, the thousands of products that we can green up, you know, this theoretically will improve the quality of life for millions or billions of people on the earth. So I think it's all inclusive. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. And that's pretty much the best answer you could give because that's exactly it. And one thing that we continually raise awareness about is look the the three basic needs food shelter and clothing can be and not to mention medicine and energy you know consumption can all be uh remedied with this one plant without having to go to war or destroy our environment uh in fact improve the environment so that's that's absolutely right um so, yeah, so, I mean, you, you just said it right there. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. That's what this plant, that's what this crop can do. You know, we just got to get it beyond 
500,000 acres worldwide like it is right now. I mean, the U.S. needs to step mm -hmm. up, and we've got to have millions of acres here. And if we do that, you know, what's going to happen across the globe is going to increase significantly, and we will see progress. And there's going to be great opportunities for entrepreneurs, businesses, local economies, and the health and well-being of people everywhere. Absolutely, 100%. It's really a a miracle plant and you know there's some people out there that are like yeah it's just like any other plant but I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it really does have the potential to create a paradigm shift in consciousness which means it'll affect every aspect of our life from our relationships to our, our our businesses how we do business and obviously our homes how we build our homes and our nutrition as we mentioned so out of all these amazing uses what would you say are like your top two most favorite applications of hemp well the consumption of it for health i mean i think that's mm -hmm. that's number one i consume it every day whether that's cbd tinctures hemp seed in my cereal or protein powder so i mean i i consume it on a regular basis and i think going forward if we can truly make the technology work and that's the replacement of you know, petroplastics and, and being able to, to have bio-based plastics that are truly biodegradable, that are not going to jack with the environment. So. Absolutely. Those are my two. Yeah, really just a tool for, for health and wellness and abundance on all levels. So tell us about the NOCO Hemp Expo a little bit more. And, and I mean, you, you have an entertainment background, you're in music, you, you could have gone, you know, several different directions with your expertise, but you chose to do uh, not only tree-free hemp paper, which we'll get into in a moment, but as far as an event, uh, an annual event that you're doing in Colorado, what, what was it inspired you to choose that? All right. Well, kind of like I said before, you know, after launching Colorado Hemp Company in 2012 and being a first adopter, you know, looking at what was going on in the market in 2012 and 2013, I just felt that there was a real need to start doing, you know, more of an education side of things. And coming from the entertainment industry, being an indie music promoter for 25 plus years, I think really equipped me to put together an expo, trade show, conference, special event that is pretty unique and, you know, and has grown incredibly over the first four years of it. So it was really about what can we do to foster, you know, an industry revolution and, you know, outside of mm -hmm. the cannabis event market that's already going on with the High Times Cannabis Cup and Big Industry Show and Canacon. And, you know, you've got all these really recreational consumption based events and, you know, Hemp is cannabis. Marijuana is cannabis. Hemp is not marijuana, but it's all cannabis. So how could we yeah. create this hemp-centric event that really, okay, cool, people can smoke. They should be able to smoke recreationally, use it medicinally. I'm all for that. But this event is really about the industrial side, the nutritional side, and all the other amazing opportunities and possibilities that exist with the cannabis plant. And that's what it's been focused around. That's the mission, and it has grown and it's been embraced, and the energy of the people that have come to this every single year continues to grow with the right energy, the right intention. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's where it's at now, and, you know, I'm excited that it's turned into this, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, so I hope that, you know, people listening to this who have not been to the event, check it out, nocohempexpo.com, and, you know, come attend this year. We're going into year five, and you know, it's going to be the biggest conference that we've had thus far. We've got commitments from people coming in from all over the world, some cool new technologies that people have not been, you know, exposed to yet or know nothing about yet. So it's going to be very, very, very cool this year. I'm so excited. So on that note, who are some of the people that you really want to call out to to say, you need to be here? This is an event specifically for who? So it's a two-day event, Friday, April 6th, Saturday, April 7th. Friday is B2B, and anybody working within the industry or wanting to get in the industry, 
You know, it's the biggest gathering of the year for hemp industry professionals, farmers, processors, product manufacturers, you know, ancillary businesses, whether that's soil and nutrient companies or greenhouse suppliers, you know, cannabis, genetics, breeders, lab companies, anybody involved in any part of the supply chain. So that's really mm-hmm. what it for, for Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, anybody that's involved in the industry or ancillary businesses that support it. And then on Saturday, it's really a general public business to consumer day. So it's about the expo. It's about, you know, consumers being able to see all these products, buy all these products. Um, the expo is open both days and people can sell, buy and sell products both days. But Saturday is really driven towards the consumer. The programming is driven that way. We're going to have some, a lot of professional athletes out at this event. We had last year, we had a really good professional athletes panel this year. We've got Athletes for Care that's going to be our nonprofit beneficiary. And, you know, from professional football players, basketball players, NHL players, volleyball players, from all the professional athletes spectrum. Right so on. It's going to be, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really, we're stepping it up big time this year. Right on. You guys also have a global hemp village where you're demonstrating all of the, what I like to call eggs hempel of what you can do with hemp. So that's another amazing aspect of this event is not just to see and, and purchase products and, and bump shoulders with other hemp entrepreneurs, but actually see real world examples of all these amazing applications of hemp at the global hemp village, right? Correct. And globally, They've been doing stuff in Europe and in China, you know, for a lot longer than us, and Canada as well. But, you know, the, the Global Hemp Village is, is anchored by hemptoday.net, which is a online magazine information portal. And there will be, you know, I think we had 15 countries represented last year within the village, and there will be more than that this year. We've got a lot of cool things going on with, the European market right now and some partnerships and trying to share technology and, and IP and trying to really connect the dots between what's going on here in the U S what we need to jumpstart our industry and what's available out there on the global market. And how can we become good stewards and and good partners with our friends across the pond? and beyond our borders Mm -hmm. because we, you know, Mm -hmm. it seems in a lot of industries and included in this one is, you know, people are protective of the technology that they've been building and creating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to make sure that if you're going into business with somebody that, you know, that it's going to be a good situation. And I think where we are with this industry and, you know, the intention of a lot of people globally, I mean, this plant, I think, generally brings out people that are well-intentioned and the people that I've met globally um, that are doing cool things all seem to be very well-intentioned people. Not that I agree. Are, yeah, but, um, you know, generally the ones that, you know, and there's, there's a lot of people that are jumping into this industry now based on the CBD cannabinoid, you know, the, the, that side of it where marijuana people have been, kind of jumping into this industry that are throwing a bunch of money in it. And it's, you know, really about the money and trying to make things happen on the quick, you know, some of that stuff is definitely not good for the industry. So I agree. You know, yeah. A lot of this Although needs CBD to be, a is... lot of this needs to be vetted, but, you know, That's again, true. going back to kind of the global hemp village and the European side of things, um, there's going to be some, some really cool innovative products that are demonstrated and, and, you know, exhibited in this area and, mm-hmm. you know, just looking forward to it. Right on. And I want to back up just a minute and, and acknowledge what you've done to really distinguish hemp from the medical side because the NOCO Hemp Expo is indeed about the industrial hemp plant and all of its amazing benefit and, and value and uses. And I just want to point out that there are organizations or events going on in, in you know, different parts of the country uh, where they use the word hemp. And when you get there, it's nothing but paraphernalia, smoking, you know, herb, and it, it, it's really nothing to do with industrial hemp. So I, I just want to commend you and say thank you for, 
creating an event that indeed does represent the industrial side of, of the cannabis plant because, you know, like I'm not going to name names, but there are events out there that use the word hemp, and when you go there, there's nothing but, you know, medical and recreational cannabis consumption and, and uh, applications, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that industry, like you said, but as far as the confiscation and, and the confusion that's going on still in people's minds today, events like that definitely don't help uh, you know, distinguishing and, and helping pass laws that will, you know, further progress the hemp movement. Um, and indeed, CBD is kind of on the forefront because you said it's getting the infusion of capital um, and there are people getting into it that are, you know, on the shadier side, uh, which is why it's, it's crucial to, to have a vetting process and, and know who you're working with. So um, I appreciate that. Um, and, and I, I know we've probably already kind of covered this, but what's some of the feedback that you get from attendees of the NOCO Hemp Expo that say, oh, my God, my favorite part was what? Like, what, what do people love the most about this event? Well, a variety of things. You know, A, the people that are there. B, the amount of products that are there. C, the programming and educational presentations and panels and participants that we've had. And I think most of all, it's the energy that people appreciate and really dig because the, the energy that's been under the roof every year continues to grow and it's positive And again, it's well-intentioned. So, you know, all of those things coming together, you know, has been, mm -hmm. you know, repeatedly brought up to me. It's like, man, the, the programming was great. I'm glad that you guys did this seed and genetics panel or, you know, the, the processing side of things, biorefineries. Wow. Those, that a biorefinery model could change the world, which it could. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're going to get there, um, you know, in the next decade with a upscaled processing and new technology that's 21st century that can take this plant and create way more ingredients that we ever thought was possible 10 years ago, you know? Yep. Exactly. So what do you feel, you know, you're a hemp entrepreneur and there's so many things to love about NOCO Hemp X, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges, you know, that you face as a hemp entrepreneur and that other hemp entrepreneurs are facing today? And, and what are some suggestions on how we can overcome those, those biggest challenges today? Well, there's, gaps in the supply chain so being a in the paper industry having a hemp paper and having some hemp paper partners you know there is a lack of hemp pulp on the planet you know right now it's coming from europe it was coming from canada there's nothing truly available in the u.s yet because the processing it just isn't here and the acreage isn't here to to be able to do it correctly and that's the way it is mm -hmm. um you know, with the fiber and herd side of things in the U.S. at this point, because that processing technology really isn't here like it is in Europe. And, you know, we've also got, you know, 25,000 acres, which is okay. But once we get to 50, 100,000 acres, you know, we got to get this processing in place where, you know, farmers know that they can take their material you know, they can get it processed, whether that's the stocks, whether that's the seed for oil and and dehulling and protein powder and the extraction technologies for doing the flour. You know, that technology is pretty prevalent and that's the low hanging fruit right now. You know, other problematic areas are funding. Most people are underfunded, you know, other than a handful of CBD driven companies and some technology companies but most everybody's underfunded. So that's a, a big problem for a lot of us and the consumer market being able to get through and, you know, convincing consumers to spend, you know, two or three times, you know, the price on a hemp product as they could get for something that's a cheap GMO or, you know, petrol product, you know, that's another problem. There's quite a few problems that mm -hmm. we have to address. And that's why, you know, mm -hmm. events like NOCO, um, organizations like the Hemp Industries Association or National Hemp Association, uh, Vote Hemp, there's, mm -hmm. you know, we as an industry have to work together and come together 
and be, you know, respectful of each other and try to, you know, solve these problems together and, and, and move this industry forward. Absolutely. So attending events, uh, not giving up, you know, connecting with the right people. Um, for, for those out there that are manufacturers or no manufacturers, definitely consider investing in equipment to help our farmers because, far, like you said, uh, Morris, our farmers aren't going to be growing this unless they have a place to outlet it and send it to some sort of processing facility for the seed or the fiber or, or what have you. So those are, are great insights. I appreciate that. And we just have a, a few minutes left. Um, so I have two, two other questions. What would you say is your favorite part, and what do you enjoy most about putting on the NOCO Hemp Expo? I think it comes back down to the energy. You know, being a music promoter and coming from promoting indie bands and indie labels, being able to bring together an industry or attempting to bring together an industry and a bunch of companies that have a bunch of products or services and and getting people together under one roof and being able to promote these products and these services and and see consumers reacting to it and and more and more people showing up every year from 350 people to 1250 people to 3200 people to 4700 people and and where we go next year and all of that with good energy you know growing and growing and growing you know that's the most exciting part of noco for me at this point Right on. Yeah, the, the overall the people, enthusiasm, mm-hmm. the enthusiasm, the excitement, the energy that surrounds this plant in this industry on a whole, and the positivity behind it, even in the midst of all of this negative stuff that's around us every day. Um, you know, I hold yeah. on to that, and I really value and cherish that at this point. It's Amen. Well, that's solid. I, I really appreciate you being on here. I know we didn't get to get too deep into uh, Tree Free Hemp, but if you could share um, each of your websites so our listeners can check more into what you're up to and get involved in your companies and events and, and uh, products, what's, uh, what are your websites and how can people learn more about you? All right. So nocohempexpo.com. That's obviously noco. Hempevents.org is our hemp event hub and anybody that's got hemp events can go on there and register and post an event and we'll put it up for you so there's a variety of stuff beyond noco that's going on there treefreehemp.com is our paper and printing site so if you're looking for business cards posters brochures that type of stuff that's um that's where you can go for that and coloradohempcompany.com is soon to be cohempco.com and we've got a small store there that we're going to be expanding and that's really going to be the launch site for everything else that we're doing for NOCO and hemp events and tree free and uh, let's talk hemp.com is our programming and entertainment and education side of you know of the event side as well as we're going to be doing some podcast stuff and video media content development next year so there's a variety of things going on with that but Cohempco.com will be the hub that will direct you to everything else that we've got going on. Right on. Well, thank you so much for being on today's show, Morris. I look forward to seeing you at the event next year, and maybe we'll do another hemp episode in the future on just the paper because that's such a valuable uh, product. And thank you for tuning in, everyone. This is your hemp entrepreneurial host, Tyler Hemp with Hemp Aware Radio. If you want to check out the archived hemp episodes, just go to hempaware.com forward slash radio and make it a hemp sational day. Do at least one thing with hemp today. Thanks so much, Morris.